Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for taking some time to be here this Sunday morning. I appreciate the opportunity to worship with you and to uh, grow with you and to share some uh, words uh, with you this morning based on our scripture choice for today. For those of you that are joining us from your home, uh, we thank you for being here with us and we appreciate the opportunity to worship with you uh, in that fashion as well. I have a few announcements that I want to share this morning, uh, but before I do that, there was a note on my desk that uh, Rosie Bogard wanted to make an announcement as well. I'm not sure what that announcement is pertaining to, but if you want to do it, <laughs> can I sit here with you guys? <laughs> you got to make a little room, is it? Well, it's that time right. again. It's Past Appreciation Month, and it seems like we just celebrated that. Gosh, it seemed like it was just last month, but it's been a year ago. Uh, but on my behalf of the congregation and your church council, we want to thank you for everything that you do for us and with us and more. You still have time for us. You always have your phone calls by, whether it's a text, a phone call, or a stop by. You always take the time. No is not in your vocabulary. Besides all your church duties, you take time for others, weddings, funerals, baptism, counseling, relay for life, smile, make beds for sleep and heavenly peace, coaching, teaching, and exercise two times a week. And if you ever have it ever come to exercise with this man, everything's in the chair. So come and join with us. We have a lot of fun, a lot of music, and we dance a little, and it's just a lot of fun. All kinds of music. You are so gifted in all that you do. Look out, now you can come up here. I guess no is in my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't get this. Okay. <laughs> all right. We hope that you will take time for you to relax a little, read your Elvis book, go to DQ and get some blues. <sighs> Las Bravos for your margaritas. We want to thank you. I'm still working the program. <laughs> <laughs> we are so blessed to have you as our pastor, our leader, most of all, our friend. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you very much. much. You got it. Appreciate it. All right. Nah. Nah. We're here to, here for, appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. I'm going to say no to coming forward, which I buckled on, but what I won't say no to is getting you out of here early today. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. I said no to getting you out of here early. <laughs> so. Grab some coffee, get settled in, all those types of things. A few things that I want to mention to you this morning, uh, in addition to a big thank you for that um, um, card, uh, whatever is in there. Um, I had some thank yous written, which I forgot to bring, uh, one to you this morning uh, for a card that you put on my desk with a gift card, and then to the, the women of Zion that um, had given me a card uh, with a gift card that was also on my desk. I, I appreciate that. I just forgot to bring them over with me this morning. A few things that I want to, <laughs> she said, don't say no, but I said no to classes this week. <laughs> uh, we're not having any fitness classes this week. Uh, every once in a while, I think it's okay to have a break. Uh, so uh, we will not be meeting um, over there uh, this week. On November 1st, they're also holding a blood drive if you'd like to join them. Notice the difference on this slide concerning the upcoming uh, event with the Evansville Philharmonic. With the number of people that we had signed up and the number of people that are going, you notice the price has been dropped to $25 per person. There are 32 people currently signed up, and uh, we certainly have room for more. Carl is downstairs uh, helping people cook uh, for United Caring Services, and uh, he will be in the lobby after church uh, for additional signups, and if you have any money that uh, you would like to give uh, for this event, he'll, he'll be there to collect that today. A couple other things that I want to share with you this morning. Uh, one is our concerning our trunk or treat event. I've received messages and, and emails uh, concerning uh, this evening's event, and if, if it will be postponed or rescheduled, no, it will not. It likely will be raining, and we'll likely still gather here, but it just won't be outside. 
um, we will have everything inside. And the way we envision that happening if we move it inside is whatever you have, whatever candies you have, whatever things that you have to share will be placed um, up in the Sunday School Hall. So we envision children and families coming in either the north or south entrance, going up into the Sunday School Hall, moving through the Sunday School Hall, just like they would go about cars, coming back down into the foyer, and then down to the basement. If there are more people downstairs uh, to distribute some of those goodies, that would be great. And then Hans and his crew uh, will have all of the food and everything that, that they are cooking in the, in the dining room, or the basement will be set like a dining room, where people get a hamburger hot dog or something like that and we can kind of get things to flow that way. We think it still provides for a great opportunity and, and a great evening. I know there are a lot of places having trunk or treats. There are some things we can control and some things that we can't. One of those is the weather. And so uh, we'll just do the best we can in the midst of it. We'd love to have you come out and join us. The donations for the food uh, that Hans and his crew are putting together will all go toward uh, the Relay for Life and, and cancer research, so please, Still come out if you were planning on having a trunk. Um, please invite people to come and join us. We would really, really love to have you. On November 12th, last year we had a chili cook-off. Um, this year, uh, Andrea had put a survey out, a poll out, and uh, it had been voted to have a soup cook-off. So that doesn't mean, where's Patrick? Where are you sitting? Um, is he in here? There you are, right there in the second row. Um, he is the defending champion, but this is how this is skewed a little bit, okay? So we're going to have to come up with some sort of rule. He lobbies the entire Schrader clan to give him votes before we even come into this thing. Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's great chili. So you can still do chili, but you can do other soup, and we'll, we'll do the voting, all of those types of things, donating desserts. We'll get some more information on this uh, for you. If you'd like to make a donation, uh, there'll be pl places to make those donations. And like we did last year, whatever the winning soup is or the winning person is gets to designate where those donations uh, will be given. So we look forward to having a great time. Next Sunday, um, this bake sale for Riley Hospital um, will uh, be in, in the foyer as well. Abby is going to do a great job like she always had continuing to, to raise money. And there was a, a question asked about if you are writing a check, uh, where should those checks go? And they should be written to Abby. If you wanted to put Riley Hospital in the memo, you're more than welcome to do that. But we're going to do the best that we can to help her attain her goal of $1,000 uh, for Riley Hospital for children. And we'll do that uh, next Sunday. If you have offering envelopes and you're using offering envelopes, they're in the foyer for you to pick up. If you have any questions or you need envelopes, don't have them, don't want them anymore because you're given online or something like that, please let Ruth Winzak know. One of the <clears throat> last things that, that I want to mention uh, today goes along with something uh, that I had shared last week about being an 11. And what's it mean to be an 11? It's doing a little bit more, going a little bit beyond, going a little bit over what's required and not necessarily asking for any notoriety, asking for any extra praise, any extra whatever, but that you do it because you feel it's the right thing to do. A lot of that has happened this week and continues to happen. I mentioned some of it already. Today's trunk or treat event couldn't happen without extra volunteers. Relay for Life and Cancer Research and the food that will be given and shared at the trunk or treat couldn't happen without people giving of their time. The crew that is downstairs and has been here yesterday and today and was here early cooking to take food to United Caring Services couldn't happen if people weren't willing to be there and people wouldn't be eaten if they wouldn't have been here. And 11. This past week, you noticed some of the parking lot projects that have been completed, if you've driven around to the back side of the church, you notice the driveways and the cemeteries have all been resurfaced. The parking lot or the parking area on the west side of this uh, church campus has been resurfaced. And there's been some work that's been done over in the main parking lot in preparation for resurfacing. 
that's a lot of work and a lot of things um, had to all happen to be able to make that possible. So I want to offer a few thank yous to the people that helped that project move forward this week in such a smooth, quick manner. I first of all want to say thank you to Sandy. I think Sandy's up in the balcony. She's always, there she is. She's always elusive up there. Uh, Sandy and her nursery school staff, uh, who had to make multiple arrangements and diversions based upon weather and, and, and the way that resurfacing could be done. Sandy, thank you for everything that you did to work with the people who were leading that project to Russell and Carl, who took care of all the property needs and arranging for the work to take place and getting bids. Without you guys, it wouldn't have happened. To Terry Schrader and a whole group of people who spent a lot of time up here uh, making sure things were done in an efficient manner. For going to rent the saw, the tamper, the equipment that came up to haul away all of the asphalt that was dug up. Some of those people that were here to help this week uh, were Steve Schrader, Warren Hildebrand, Gary Vogel, Tom Paul, Mike Kendall, and Roger Radel. We also uh, were lucky to have the uh, help of Bill Meyer, along with John Rowley and John Wilson, who helped make all of the uh, project um, possible uh, this week. So thank you guys. Uh, again, being an 11, going up and ab above and, and beyond is, is wonderful. I want to give a big shout out to the North Posey Vikings and their staff and everything that took place. If you want to give them a round of applause, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Being down 28-14 late in the ball game um, isn't an easy thing to come back to and then to overcome uh, an overtime and to beat somebody that you haven't, I think, ever beaten in their history. Is that, is that true? I don't know if that's true. It's been a long time. I had a hard time believing it was ever had happened, but... Congratulations to their entire staff, the community, and the possibilities now that it brings uh, going a little bit deeper into the playoffs. To all of you who for the last three or four years were giving me a hard time about your Purdue Boilermakers defeating the Nebraska Cornhuskers, I get the opportunity to stand here to stay and say, go Huskers. <laughs> um, I don't know why you guys aren't wearing your red. I don't know why you guys aren't wearing any of that stuff, but... Um, I just wanted to throw that in there today because I'm being Andre. I also want to offer uh, continued prayers to the Ziegler family. Paul was buried on Monday to the family of Joyce Walker, who I had the opportunity to meet and officiate a funeral for on Thursday. I want to offer words of support and prayer to all of the families who are grieving uh, the loss of loved ones uh, in Maine following another shooting that took the lives of many, many people. And then finally, the families and people that are affected with the shootings that took place in Evansville and some of the arrests that were made here in Posey County. Um, it's just not the shooting, and it's just not the event that affects people, but there are ripple effects. And so for everyone that is affected by choices and loss of life, um, we offer whatever support that we can in the best way that we can. And we choose to work to try to be an 11 as we um, try to be as supportive as we can as a community of believers. With that being said today, I truly want to uh, thank the church council and I want to thank all of you, uh, as Rosie mentioned. Uh, in her opening remarks for all of your support. I want to thank the church choir for all the work that they put in and all the extra things that they do in preparation for sharing with us on Sunday morning. And I would like to invite them to come forward today and to start us out with their song, Our God. Please come.
Thank you, thank you. Great job. Before they all get seated, let's all stand and join together in our opening prayer and hymn. Together, we offer these words today, and that is, Lord of light and hope, be with us this day as we have gathered to hear your word. Help us open our hearts to the commandment to love, even when loving is difficult. Give us the courage to be people who will commit their whole lives in your service. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Because he lives.
Kids, come on down. Everybody else, be seated. While they're making their way down, it's an opportunity for me to make just a couple more announcements. Uh, one is on Thursday of this week, uh, the Zion Nursery School uh, will have a Hacienda Give Back Day. It's a great way to help them raise some money to support uh, what, what they do downstairs. There is a poster, and there are some little tear-offs out in the foyer. If you wouldn't mind grabbing one of those and using it on Thursday. Uh, that would be wonderful. Um, we would love for you to support them. You can also use it in takeout. Uh, there's also a, a post, and I'll put a post up uh, this week again for those of you that still use Facebook. I don't know how many people are using that app much anymore, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll put a photo up there that you can also use when, when you show them that when, when you go into the restaurant. In addition, um, the state hospital uh, will have patients that you can... Uh, Get information on if you'd like to supply some uh, Christmas gifts, and Irma uh, will have those for you um, if, if you would like to see Irma. We coming, big man? All right. Would you be able to help me do something today in a little bit? All right. One of the things that we've been talking about today is all the things that happen in a church and the way that a church can make a difference in people's lives. Something Something happened last night, or maybe it started happening yesterday. Does anybody remember? Let's, let's go all the way back to Friday. Can you remember what the weather was like on Friday? What, what was it like? It was sunny? Yeah. It was really warm, wasn't it? It was sunny and warm. What else? Yeah, it felt yeah, it felt really hot. It felt kind of like summer, didn't it? It was kind of hot, and it, and it was humid, and it was like, oh, my goodness, it feels like we're back in the summer again. And then something started to happen yesterday. What was it? It started to rain. Yeah, what were you going to say? started to get colder. Sure, look at some of you. You're wearing jackets today. You've got a vest on with a long sleeve. You've got a sweatshirt on. What happens when it gets colder outside? What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, what if you didn't have it? Let's say you didn't have a jacket. How would you feel? What do you think? Have you ever been outside, like you got caught in a, a storm or, or the rain or something, you didn't have a jacket? Has anybody ever had that happen? Yeah, I've had that happen too sometimes. Has anybody ever had to be outside when it was cold and you didn't have a jacket on? Yeah, what, what's it feel like? What does it feel like? Oh, it's like you're freezing to death. Your fingers kind of don't move as fast as they used to. What's it feel like? <laughs> you try to, yeah, it, it can feel warm one, once, once you get a jacket. So I'm, I'm wondering if we might be able to make a difference this year again. You all helped me last year do something, and I'm wondering if you're willing to help me do something again this year. Would you be willing to help me do something this year again? Yes? You promise? If you're going to help me do something, you'll, you'll really, really, really help me? Okay, really, really help me, or really, really, really help me? Yeah, that's right. You're not a 10, you're an 11, right? You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. We're going to do something again this year to help get people a bunch of jackets and coats because if they don't have them, they might be cold this winter. There's a group in Evansville that collects all these jackets, and they actually clean them all up. They run them through uh, the, the dry cleaners, which is kind of like putting them through a, a wash machine. So anybody that gets a donated jacket, it's nice and clean. It's almost just like new. You can also donate new jackets if you want to. You might have some extra jackets at home that you don't even need that you might be able to bring. You do? See, so you already got some. So you have so many that what? You already got some too? So you're, what's that? You got so many jackets, you might be able to bring a few. Yeah. Your job is going to be this. First of all, Hans is going to help me and help you put this box together. 
and then some of you are going to take this box and put it out in the foyer, and then each week, I don't care who it is, I need somebody to check that box to see if there are some jackets in that box. And if there are, after we're done with church, together we'll put all of those jackets in a black bag, we'll bundle it up, and I'll take those, and I'll take them to Don's Clayton, which is a cleaning place, that will clean those jackets up and get them distributed. Do you think you can help me do that up to Christmas? Yeah. yeah. So this is the box. You might remember this box from last year. Remember this big box? So what I, I need you to come up here and help me put it together. Hans, I am not good at putting things together. You, you and two other people can, can take it over there. Okay, okay. What we have to do is get the box square. We've got to get it all squared up. And then we have to put it all together the best way that we can. Do you think that's, is that going to hold? What else should we do? Hmm, how are we going to do this? You know how to do it now? How's that look? How's that look? Let's flip it over and see if it's going to hold anything. Uh-oh, before somebody else flips over. We good? All right. Uh-oh. Flip it over. Good job. Is, is it going to hold? How big a box is it? Look, look how it's this big a box that if I put you in it, you disappear practically. I'm just kidding. You're not going to stay in it. That's okay. So your job is, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Your job is to check that each week and to encourage people to bring coats to put in there so we can get those coats out to people that might need them this winter so they're not cold, okay? All right, before you go take it, let's have a prayer. Let me give these to people who are going to help me with the offering. There's all kinds of jobs to do today. Good job. Good job. Who else wants to help? You want to help? And you're helping? Okay. We'll help some other helpers next week. Yeah, come here. Let's have a quick prayer, shall we? Dear God, thank you for helping us to understand that we should be helping all kinds of people. Amen. Good job. There you go. Be careful. I didn't know how far along you were, and turns out you were further along than I thought you were. <laughs> Let's think about our scripture for today in the Gospel of Matthew. I want to share some things with you uh, this morning concerning our scripture passage, and then I want to reflect on it a little bit with you, and then we'll be uh, ready to sing our closing hymn and, and make our way back out into the day. So I want you to imagine with me right now. Imagine what it would mean to be threatened by love. That might seem like a strange question. It might not seem like a, a question that you'd ever heard before. But I want you to think about, and I want you to imagine, being threatened by love. This morning, 
our scripture reading, Jesus has an encounter with religious leaders of his day, and in the dialogue that he has with those that he is dealing with, they've asked questions in order to trap him, and instead they have been left confused and even more threatened by his ministry and his message. In this scripture reading, he does an incredible job of using his knowledge of the Hebrew scriptures. He does a great job of using his understanding of his theological truths, and he responds to their questions in unexpected and astonishing ways. I'll give you two examples. First, he asks them questions in return, which is a great way to have dialogue. You learn a lot by asking better questions and deeper questions. He asks them a lot of questions. He just doesn't allow them to question him and question him and question him. He has responded by sharing in parables, telling stories, and they are a bit confused by him, and they ask him to identify a single commandment as what would be the greatest. And secondly, Jesus does not give them the answer in the form that they want, but he does respond. He names a commandment they know. He names a commandment that they are very, very familiar with. He names a commandment that they've probably known from the time that they were very, very young. And they probably agree with, but he doesn't stop there. He says there's another like it. In other words, he cannot and he will not choose between them. He infers that to choose to love God is also to choose to love your neighbor as yourself. You can't do one or the other. The commandment is to love. And that commandment is to include everyone. And that's the threat. Our reading today from the Gospel of Matthew has been recorded in this way. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest, and this is the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. And he said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. I love this closing line. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. <laughs> Stay away from him. We don't want to ask him any more questions. They dare not ask him any more questions. Why? I don't know for sure. Were they afraid of what he might say next? Were they afraid of what they might be asked? Were they embarrassed in front of other people that might have been gathered there for that exchange? Were they ashamed of what he may have exposed? I think they may have felt all those feelings. I'm not sure. I wasn't there. But I also believe that if they did feel shame, that that shame comes because Jesus exposed a bit of the weakness in their theological perspective and practices and the flaw of their motivations. You can have all of the most wonderful theological perspectives in the world. You can espouse all types of things, right? Haven't some of the most horrible people in our history been some of the most outwardly faithful people you may have ever experienced? Their motivations 
didn't necessarily match their perspectives. These leaders, when it came right down to it, aren't really driven, shaped, or compelled by love. Power without love leads to privilege and corruption. Power without love leads to, you owe me. I have the right to take what I want. I'll talk about how much I love you, because I'll say the things that I might be giving back to you. But power with love is completely different. It yields compassionate service. It shows up in ministry. And today there's been an incredible testament to that ministry. You've heard all about it. We had announcement after announcement and person after person after person, hours after hours after hours of volunteerism. The contrast between the message of Jesus and those leaders have been defined with incredible clarity. They lack love of neighbor. And Jesus assures them that means they do not love the Holy One either. You can't have one and exclude the other. In many ways, as I read through this and reread through this and studied it and read it, it seems like, which they are, they're asking him to make a list. What do we need to do? When should we do it? How should we do it? Who do we do it with? Where and whom should it be done? When shouldn't we? Help us understand. I don't think lists are bad things. We all have lists, right? Anybody here make a list? <laughs> probably have a list. Probably have a list when you're leaving here. You're like, okay, what do we got to do? I wonder how long he's going to be today because I got a long list of things to do. Things to do for the day. Somebody may have given you a list of things. We're going to have to fix this combine. We're going to have to fix this tractor. I need you to run and get these parts. Here's the list. I'll be here. Come back, and we'll get it all ready to go. Grocery lists may be another thing. You may have a list of special recipes. You may have a list of your big projects for the year. We are going to accomplish these two things this year, whether it kills us or not. We all may have lists because they keep us on track. They help us to focus on things that are most important in the busyness of our lives. They help us keep focus. They serve to filter out the noise and the distractions, all the outside influences, special interests, gadgets and devices that seek and demand our attention. Lists help us to order how we spend our time which is really, really important. Speaking of relationships and the time that you spend with people, I've, I've, I've heard it said in talking about youth and younger people, even older people for that matter, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me the people you're hanging around with and I'll kind of get a pretty good idea of what your perspective really is. They help us, these lists, to organize our thinking and they can ultimately help us keep our priorities in focus, which is part of this conversation today. I read an article recently entitled, The Unimportance of Practically Everything. It was written by Greg McCowan. The title is a rephrasing of a quote from a leadership authority, if it's an authority or a leadership Guru, somebody that's popular in the world of leadership, John Maxwell, who said, you can't overestimate the unimportance of practically everything. And this article describes an intelligent, driven executive who is constantly distracted by having multiple conversations going at any given time on X, formerly known as Twitter, whether it was Gmail whether it was Facebook, whether it was Instagram, whether it was Snapchat, whatever it was of social media, he used all kinds. And while these activities may have served some simple and useful purpose, they kept him from getting the most important and rewarding parts of his jobs done. Ultimately, the cumulative effect of the distractions had a negative impact on his quality of life. 
And the article goes on to illustrate the relationships between activity and reward in the importance of distinguishing the trivial many from the vital few. Think about our scripture for today. How many things should we be doing? How long is our list? Look at me. Look at all those things I accomplished today. Versus the vital few. And more than just providing background and explanation, the author gave a useful first do this course of action. And I want to share it with you this morning. One, make a simple action list. How do you do that? You write down your top six priorities, whatever they may be. Write them down. Whatever six. Not a lot. Not even double digits, just single digits. Write down your six priorities. Cross out the bottom five. Put your top priority in a highly visible place. Here's how I used to do it. I'd use an Expo marker, an erasable marker, and I would put it on the mirror in the bathroom, so it's the first thing I saw in the morning when I was taking a shower. For a while, it was dealing with my weight. So I'd weigh myself, and I'd put it up there, 165 pounds. What's so funny? And then the next day, I came in, and it said 265, so something was off on this scale. But it may be something other than that. What is your highest priority? What is your top priority? After you cross everything out, and you're focusing on the vital few, what might it be? Schedule time to work on that priority every day. What is it? And how are you going to perfect it? How are you going to get good at it? What's it going to be? It's different for all of you. And then every time something calls your attention away from that priority, make a note of that distraction. As I read that review, I did think of our scripture for today from Matthew. Because if you read chapter 22 closely, apply it to your life, you see that these Sadducees and these Pharisees are trying to entangle Jesus. They're trying to distract him. They're trying to trip him up with their questions. But you can almost hear in the tone of his reply... Jesus saying to them, stop focusing on the trivial. You can't overestimate the unimportance of practically everything. I'm trying to tell you what's vitally important. I'm trying to tell you what's vitally essential. Please, listen. Eugene Peterson paraphrases it this way. Teacher, which command in God's law is the most important? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion. Love the Lord your God with all your prayer. Love the Lord your God with all your intelligence. This is the most important. The first on any list. But there's a second set alongside of it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hang from them. In other words, distinguish the best you can, the trivial many, from the vital few, and focus your attention on that vitality that comes from your focus. Because it really is a threat. God's love is a threat. Because they not only reject the person of Jesus, these leaders reject God's love embodied through him in his actions. The barometer of life is love. And the real test of anything related to God is also love-related. And here it's to any aspect of the law Without that lens, without that emotion, 
is missing the primary element necessary for life, reconciliation, and healing. That message of the prophets is rooted in the love that Jesus talks about today. God's justice serves as another expression of that love. And the hope of the world rests in the power that comes along with it. It's up to us to share that emotion. It's up to us to put the distractions aside and to focus on the vital few. Because ultimately, God's love gets put on trial, doesn't it? And it is found guilty. And what's love do? It does not defend itself. It simply continues to love until death. But here's the magic of it. It prevails. And it continues to prevail. And it prevails again. And it prevails again. And it prevails again. It prevails today. It will prevail tomorrow. And it will prevail next week. Regardless of what the news brings us this week, love will prevail because there's hope. And that hope comes from us. That hope comes from you. That hope comes from me. That hope comes from us doing it together. May love continue to be the essence and the focus of all that you are and all that you do. Would you please join with me in prayer? We offer this prayer today, dear Lord, in your honor. We trust you're here with us today. We trust you love us. We do the best we can to express our love to you in so many different ways. We hope that we're worthy, but we know that we're not. We're not always perfect. We make mistakes but you continue to accept us. You continue to love us, and you continue to encourage us to do the same. May everything that we've focused on this morning remain a focus for us this week. And whatever lists we make individually, help those lists to continue to focus on passages like today and Remove the distractions that keep us from doing that which you would have us do. Not only loving you, but going beyond. Being that 11 and loving our neighbor as ourself. We honor you today, not only with our words, but with our actions and with prayer. When together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, Make Me a Blessing, which we will be this week in so many ways.
Good job, everyone. Thank you for worshiping with me today. Thanks for showing up, and thanks for being here. I appreciate the chance to grow and to learn with you. May God be with you today and tomorrow and all the days of our lives until we gather together again. Our worship here this morning at Zion Lippe United Church of Christ has ended. Let our service now begin. Amen. <laughs> 